Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mind Pump. If you've followed the show for any time, you know Sal is a supplement fiend. Well, he had a dream experience here recently. He helped formulate a product for Organifi. In this episode, we speak with Shanai, who is a nutritionist, herbalist, health expert, and formulator of products for Organifi. And she has a very interesting backstory. So please enjoy the show. Finally, 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 Sal, we can finally talk about this. I am so pumped. Yeah, yeah we've been super uh, excited. We've been alluding to it for what, maybe three, four more months? I don't know. It's been quite a while. It's been a while. I, one of my, as you guys know, one of my passions uh, is supplements. I love supplements. I love formulations. We know. I this. use the word passion uh, instead of addiction. But anyway, it's a, it's it's a lot of fun. Organifi, who's and we have someone here. We're gonna we're gonna ask some questions because this was really fun for me. But Organifi approached us and said, hey, we'd like to do uh, like a product with you guys. Do you guys have any ideas? And not you guys, I mean, yeah. I, I was like, so I was like uh, yeah, I, have a, I have a lot yeah. of ideas. <laughs> I jumped out of my chair, super excited for a couple of reasons. One, because I've always wanted to do that. Um, and also, I don't have to source the product and buy all the stuff. So it's really great. I get to do the fun part. Yeah. And then two, um, Organifi's, we just respect the hell out of it. It's like the super integrity with this company. And as I've complained about before on the podcast, the supplement industry can be really tough because there's a lot of just bad integrity companies out there and, and stuff like that. Organifi is not one of them. They're like, they're incredible. So I said, yes, I got some ideas. And one of the main ideas I had was I wanted to come up with something and I'm going to loosely, it, it, you could loosely put it in this category, but so much more than that, right? I know the pre-workout category of supplements is super popular. And I, 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 I like some of the value that pre-workouts provide, like focus, energy, performance. I don't like how pre-workouts are typically designed. They're like super stimulant heavy. They're not Over very healthy. Based, yeah. They'll hammer your cortisol through the roof. They're just, they're just not great for you. So I'm like, I want to come up with something that gives people energy, uh, improves creative thought, improves productivity, that also handles all the negative stuff that we get from pre-workouts and why, you know, it's, I'm not a fan of lots of pre-workouts. Um, so what I did is I got on the phone with Organifi and they introduced me to Shanai who does and works with formulations and stuff. So we have Shanai here. Now, before we get into why you and I decided to put, you know, the ingredients we put in, into this product, it's called Peak Power, by the way. Peak Power is what's going to be called. Um, what's your background? So how do you know what you know? Cause when I talked to you, I was like, Oh, one of my, my biggest pet peeves is when I talk to people who are experts in supplements and, and you know I know more, more than they do. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Not the case with you. You're like amazing. So what's your back? Tell us a little bit about your background and, and you know, what you do with Organifi. Thank you so much. First of all, it's great to be here. Um, I am the head of R and D for Organifi. So I create all the formulas. I, um, help with, you know, claims, education, marketing as well, and sourcing. And I have been formulating supplements for about 20 years now. Yeah. I am super right. passionate as well. Um, I, I got into this industry because in my, in my early 20s, I planned to go to med school. So I was studying pre-med, really passionate about medicine in general. And I thought that that was the way that, you know, I could help people. And then, you know, my life took some some changes. I ended up having children at a really young age. So when I was still in undergrad, I had my first. And I didn't want to leave to go to med school. And I really struggled for many years until I happened upon holistic nutrition. I started uh, working on my master's in nutrition and herbology. And at around the same time, I actually got really sick from a pharmaceutical. I took um, Zithromax, which is an antibiotic that people take all the time. And I came down with what's called idiopathic thrombocytopenia purpura, known as ITP. That sounds like it sucks. It, it sucks. Yeah. yeah. Is <laughs> it, that blood, is that uh, blood too. clotting issues? Yeah. And, okay. Yeah. So I um, took my first dose and I was at a roller skating party with my kids, didn't fall or anything, woke up with bruises all over my body. Oh, wow. And I thought, wow, maybe I'm low in iron or low in vitamin K, you know, took my second dose, um, woke up in the morning and had blood coming out of my tongue and out of my nose. And that's when I had to go to the hospital. I ended up on a um, cancer ward. They were checking me for leukemia and, you know, everything that could cause this. Uh, turns out I had zero platelets when normally you need to be at least over 150,000, preferably around 250,000. And I would have died if I would have fallen. And uh, so that was the scariest moment of my life. And the hematologist said, we don't know exactly how to cure this. 
And the only way that we can possibly cure it is by taking your spleen out. He's like, okay, well, I have no platelets right now. I have a bleeding problem and you want to take my spleen out. And do surgery. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, and do surgery. And then I would have to, and then he informed me that I'd be on antibiotics for the rest of my life because I'd have no spleen. I was just diving into herbs at that point. I didn't really understand how to keep myself healthy with herbs. So I left the hospital. I declined treatment, left the hospital, got on a whole bunch of Chinese and Ayurvedic herbs. And within two weeks, my platelets went from zero to 100,000. Wow. Then I added more to my regimen and I my plants went to 275,000. And that was just that acknowledgement that we have everything on this planet that we need to heal ourselves. Wow. It's just about, you know, maybe taking the time and figuring it out. And, and our bodies are innate healing machines. So we can get ourselves back in balance. And, you know, throughout that time period, I did suffer from adrenal fatigue mm-hmm. I actually wasn't making enough cortisol. Most people make too much chronically because we're so stressed out, but I wasn't making enough. And it was, you know, a key reminder to me that cortisol is necessary for life because I didn't even have the energy to walk up the stairs at the age of 27. And so I started having panic attacks and coming down with pneumonia. And that's when I realized, okay, I have to, I have to heal my body. Like I have to go with the root cause of what's going on. And my adrenal glands were not balanced. And so I created my first formula, which was an adaptogen formula. And I always say to this day, ashwagandha saved my life. Wow. Wow, That's remarkable. So you took all your creative passion because I've I've worked with with, uh, people in pre-med and doctors. And one thing that they all had in common was they were just so driven uh, to learn about their specialty. And so you took your creative drive and just shifted it to, let me look at Ayurvedic medicine, Chinese medicine, plants, herbs, things that we could do naturally to help our bodies heal versus where you were going, which was the Western medicine approach. Yeah, definitely. And I I realized at that time that everything was meant to, everything was meant to be as it was, because if I had just gone the traditional med school route, I probably wouldn't have known how to heal myself, or maybe I wouldn't have even been open-minded enough to delve into that herbal regimen that I took to heal myself. Well, now I can see why you, you work with Organifi because that's really their, I mean, that's like part of their core really um, is, I remember years ago when we first started working with Organifi, there was this report that came out on uh, heavy metals in plant proteins and some organic proteins were super high in it. Many of the big brands. Yeah. And Organifi, and right away we saw this report and we're like, oh shit. Okay. Let's talk to Organifi, see what's going on. And they were like on top of it, like right away. We're testing right now. We'll let you know what the report, and they came out of course cleaning everything. And that's what, that was like a, like a moment where we're like, okay, this company's got uh, tremendous integrity. Today's episode giveaway is the RGB bundle maps, anabolic mass performance and maps aesthetic. You can win for free. Here's how you win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications, do all those things. And if we like your comment and declare you the winner, we'll let you know in the comment section that you got free access to the RGB bundle. By the way, this episode is all about a new product that I helped design with Organifi. You can use it as a pre-workout. I think you'll love it. Go check it out. Go to Organifi.com forward slash mind pump. The product is called Peak Power. One more thing. We have a sale going on this month on two workout programs, MAPS OCR and MAPS Cardio, both 50% off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below to get yourself set up. All right, here comes the show. Okay, so let's talk about this particular product. So I get introduced to you. I'm like, I want to create something. Wait, before you get into that, I actually want to know how did you get to Organifi? How did that oh, relationship? Good, yeah, good how did question. that relationship happen? Oh gosh, you know, and it, how long ago is it now? Yeah, I've been with Organifi for three and a half years now, and I never thought I would. I own my own company, and I've always been really entrepreneur. Like I've had the entrepreneur spirit. Spirit, and I, you know. I don't know. It was, I had just merged with another company. I owned a nutrition bar company. The whole thing went under four months later after we did the merge and I needed to just get away for a little while. So I was in Costa Rica with my kids healing a little bit. And I was on the plane with, with one of my daughters. We were going back to California for the Expo West, Natural Products Expo, my favorite event. And I was like, you know, I'm going to look for a job. And if I find the most perfect job, then we'll leave Costa Rica and come back to California and Organifi popped up. And I, I was like, there couldn't be, you know, any more perfect alignment from an integrity standpoint. Did you know who they were before, beforehand? I did. And then, 
you know, just, just loosely, I actually had never tried any of Organifi's products, yeah. but I did that, that I did do a deep dive and, you know, as far as quality standards go and, and the right kind of mushrooms, the right kind of adaptogens. And I was, I was so thankful that I found Organifi. So somebody with your background, are, were you able like pretty quickly to, to piece that together? Like how quickly can you look at a supplement company and go like, oh, they're using, you know, low grade this or shit product that, or they're pixie dust. And like, can you see that like instantly? Generally speaking, yeah. sometimes labels can be a little deceiving, which is why I'm skeptical of certain brands that I don't know a lot about. But yeah, I could definitely tell and I could I could tell immediately from the mushrooms that Organifi sourced because most people use mushrooms that are grown on grain and um, they don't even get to form a fruiting body. And so they are mostly alpha glucans and not beta glucans. And beta glucans is what you actually need from the mushrooms. Um, it's the the active constituents that actually make a difference with like immunomodulation and cognitive mm. and adaptogenic properties. And so I knew right off the bat that they were using the best quality mushrooms grown on wood, grown exactly outside the way that they're supposed to be grown. And that is usually a key <sighs> indicator that a brand is doing things right. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that mushrooms basically are like, they absorb whatever they grow on. I mean, it's so important. I know all plants kind of do that, but mushrooms really are like sponges, right? They are what they eat. Just like we are Their Their DNA is very similar to us because they're not plants. Mm -hmm. So we're like fungus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they don't make their own food. So right. yeah. It, you know, if you're going to grow mushrooms on something that's low quality, then the mushrooms are going to be low quality as well. And it's not even about it, it's it's it is about that. But when you think about, I've seen some of the mushroom plants in the U.S. where there's just a big plastic bag with a big ball of grain in it, and then the mushrooms are inoculated, and it becomes kind of like a tempeh product, and it never the mushrooms never form a fruiting body, and the fruiting body is the mushroom itself. So here you have this like tempeh looking product, and then they take the whole thing and they dry it and they grind it. So you're obviously, they don't remove the starch. That's why a lot of the mushrooms, you're getting alpha glucans and not the beta glucans. So you might as well just be eating starch. Wow. This is interesting. Okay. So let me ask you about one of the ingredients in the, in the product we put together, because I did, I mentioned that I did want some caffeine in it. I don't want a ton of caffeine, but I wanted some caffeine because caffeine in the right doses and in the right context has got some pretty cool benefits. And you wanted, uh, and I hope I'm saying it right, guayosa? Did I say that right? Guayusa. Guayusa. You wanted guayusa. That's where you wanted to source the caffeine from. Why not your regular caffeine, you know, synthetic caffeine like you find in so many of the products? Why, why from there? That's a great question. Honestly, I fell in love with guayusa probably 10 years ago. Uh, guayusa comes from Ecuador, from the Amazonian region. Mm. It has a rich history since really, you know, around the year 500 with the, the tribal people there would use it um, as part of ritual and they would also use it um, for hunting. So it's called Night Watchman because it gives you what's called still focused energy. So people would consume, these tribal people, the Kichwa tribe would consume Guayusa and they would be able to stay awake all night yet stay focused and non-jittery. And so guayusa is a really special ingredient that, you know, I, I love to have guayusa in teas. And this is an even more special guayusa extract because it's standardized to 20% caffeine. What okay. does that mean? So it means that if you take 100 milligrams of guayusa, then you're going to get 20 milligrams of caffeine. So a higher percentage so, of it. Yeah. Yeah. So you know exactly how much caffeine is in it. And what's really special about guayusa is that it contains these really amazing antioxidants known as polyphenols and chlorogenic acid is one of them. And, um, this product has a beneficial effect on your neurotransmitters that affect focus and motivation and energy yet without the, the bad that can come from um, consuming too much caffeine, like the jittery, the increased cortisol response, the increased epinephrine and adrenaline that, that gives you the jittery feeling and then the crash after. So what's the theory on why why you don't get the jittery feeling? What's in it that's that's countering that? Like I know we, like a common thing that we like to do is take caf regular caffeine and then theanine. we'll take theanine with mm -hmm. it to kind of counter some of those effects. Is it naturally found in that? Is that what, what we're... Mm -hmm. 
Okay. It's the theanine and the chlorogenic acid. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's all, and it's all in one like organic compound. So oh. when she explained this to me, I was like, oh, oh. well, this is great. Yeah. It's way it better than having. Sense. So it's not like adding extra, extra ingredients. Yeah. This is, this is a holistic ingredient. Yeah. So it would be like getting all the individual ingredients to like an apple and being like, here, take all this. This is what an apple is. And it's well, versus eating an apple, which we all know yeah. in its yeah. natural form and the way that things tend to, the way that we evolve consuming things and the way that things evolve, they tend to be balanced more naturally in, in nature. Like white willow bark versus aspirin, for example, is a good example. Like white willow bark, that's where they got aspirin from, yeah. but white willow bark comes with a lot of other compounds in it that make it less likely to overdose and more likely to have other beneficial effects. A hundred percent. I mean, nature is, has so much intelligence and, and we haven't even begun to understand. And I love that white willow bark explanation or example, because it's the same with berberine. Yeah. You know, you can take Oregon grape brew and it has a small amount of berberine in it, but there's so many other active constituents that we haven't even begun to understand that is part of that plant. That's why I still prefer to take an Oregon grape root to get the whole thing yeah. rather than just the berberine by itself. Yeah. So what Western medicine does well is also its weakness is it very, it's very good at diving really, really deep in specific, you know, areas. Right. And so what they tend to do is like, Oh, this plant has this, this effect. Let's do a study. Oh, the study shows it does have an effect. What is it in the plant that's doing it? And then let's take that, let's synthesize it and concentrate it. Not realizing that there's often this kind of synergistic, effect with the all the compounds being together and we also we, we often screw up by trying to take one thing out and, and not considering that there may be a balancing effect with other things and this is something i've talked about on the show before there was another ingredient you wanted in there that i didn't mention but you brought up and you made a great case for which was bacopa why why add bacopa to this i love bacopa um well the way i see this this is a focused energy product and bacopa has been used, bacopa leaf, leaf has been used for thousands of years in Ayurvedic medicine for memory, um, concentration, mood, and focus. And so I felt like this would be a perfect pairing with the guayusa and the other nootropic ingredients that are in this product. Yeah, bacopa's got, um, I mean, I mean, for people who want to see clinical trials, it's got uh, like data, like real real world data showing that it does help with that. Now, a, well, what, sorry, Sal, but I, I just know that someone's thinking this because I'm, I'm looking at the list of all the things uh, that are in here and everything's so, so far sounding really cool. How do you how do you get some like, OK, like what we're talking about right now, how do you get the right dosage for the, the biggest bang for your buck for a product like this when you have that many things in it? Like, so are we getting enough like the, of, of that product in there to get the benefits from it. And is there as a higher dose better? Is it like, how do you, how are we, did we, was that formulated by you guys? Oh yeah. No, she's like, she, in fact, uh, I don't remember specifically what it was, but she's like, if we can't put an efficacious dose, then it's a waste of time. That's efficacious was the word I was yeah. looking yeah. for, right? That's what I feel like you see sometimes in supplements. They're like, cause they have some support of our claim, why it's so great. Right. And it's like, Oh, let's sprinkle a little bit of that in there. And then we'll tell everybody how amazing this is. Are, is the dosage of all these things we're talking about I'll let about her answer because we had this conversation. Yeah, it's called fairy dusting. And that's yes. one of my biggest pet peeves when somebody has like 70 ingredients and you're like, okay, yeah. well, I know I'm not getting enough of any of these ingredients, <laughs> yeah. you know. So um, that's why I focused on really these, you know, a handful of key ingredients. Okay. And I didn't throw 20 ingredients in because I could have <clears throat> thrown 20 ingredients in. Um, this is a standardized Bacopa. So it's stronger than just a powder. So it's 20% standardized dyes for the active constituent that has been studied for cognition, okay. which is the bacocides. Okay. So it's 20%. And so you still have the other active constituents within this bacopa powder, but then you also have a standardization for what we know really helps with focus. So there is enough ingredient in this to really make you feel a difference. But I also formulated this so that you could take double the dose. Yes. I know that we mentioned yes. some people are going to want to take double mm -hmm. the dose. Some people might want to take this three times a day, and this is totally fine. Oh. Yeah. I, so that, that was a big deal for me. So I want it because I know with like, because right, I know we wanted to be able to, if I want a little more caffeine, I want to be able yes. to go to and not feel like I'm overdoing. Correct. Okay. Right. Because uh, what a lot of these products do is they, there's a huge individual variance when it comes to compounds that are quote unquote nootropics or stimulant. And the individual variance is huge. Like with one person, it's too much with another person. They don't necessarily notice anything. So I wanted it do dosed so that, that you could add more 
and it would be great. Or you could do a small dose and get a great effect. My goal with this was to, I wanted to make it so that I would just take a small dose and not overdo the stimulant. So I didn't want like 300 milligrams of caffeine right. in a single dose type of deal. Right. So another compound I wanted in there, um, and I'm so glad we were able to source this and find a good you know uh, source of this was lion's mane. I've used lion's mane before. I love its effects, um, especially its cumulative effects. I noticed when I take it for weeks and weeks and weeks, I just seem to be able to recall words better. I have better fluency. Um, it just, I feel sharper. Can we talk about lion's mane a little bit? And it also has some adaptogenic properties, right? Yeah. Yeah. I love that you brought up lion's mane. Again, this is one of our best sources for lion's mane. So it is grown on wood. It, it, it does get time to form a fruiting body. So you've got all of the active constituents that you get from the fruiting body. This is also a concentrated extract. And um, what's great about lion's mane is it, you mentioned that it is stronger over time. So it does fall into the adaptogen category mm -hmm. to where you might not tell a difference from the first time you use it, but as you use it daily, um, it balances, it creates this homeostasis in the body. And then you feel more and more benefits from it. So it will, um, you know, definitely helps with digestion. It helps with immune function. Lion's mane is really known for focus and cognition and just being really neuroprotective. Yeah. Now here's why, what, something I like about this, one of the drawbacks or negatives with the whole like energy, you know, pre-workout energy, whatever you want to call it market is that because the way they formulate them, these are compounds that get worse over time as you use them on a daily basis. Either mm -hmm. A, you build up a tolerance. So it's like, I got one scoop, I need two scoops, I need three scoops. Side effects tend to ramp up. And it just, it goes from like, I had a great workout or I feel great too, I feel like shit, or I ignore the way I feel and my hormones are off or whatever, which we used to see in the, in the fat burning space back in the day. Lion's Mane balances that out a little bit because Lion's Mane gets better over time. See what I'm saying? So yeah, it's like I mean, you take this on a, you know, four or five days a week, you'll get the 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 longer term effects of the lion's mane. So you don't get that, you know, like, oh crap, I this makes me feel like crap after using it, you know, three or four days in a row. Definitely. Yeah. I like to think of our adaptogens and adaptogens are really my favorite class of herbs and mushrooms, but I like to think of them as like the thermostat that keeps the body temperature exactly where mm. it's supposed to be within the body. And it keeps the body within homeostasis. I love that. Okay. So let's talk about, um, okay. Green tea's in there. Green tea. We know it's health benefits. Mm -hmm. You didn't use the green tea for the caffeine, right? You used it for something else. No, there is. The caffeine is coming from a combination of the guayusa okay. and the green tea. Okay. The, but there were other things in, in the green tea that you said, this is why I want this in there. You know, really great polyphenols okay. that we know about in green tea. This this whole product is loaded with antioxidants. Okay. Is there any other compound? Because there's, there's a few other ingredients, but I want to talk about the most important ones. Was there, was there any others that you think we should mention? Yeah. So we have a clinical dose of coffee berry known as Neurofactor which has been clinically proven to support healthy BDNF levels, which is a key neuroprotein that protects the brain and helps with healthy cognition and focus. And that has a really wonderful ingredient story as well. It's it's grown on these family farms in India and they're actually using like the leftover pulp to power their farm. This company is doing great things. They're supplying water to people who need it. They're supplying books and desks and computers and bathrooms to schools for children. So in addition to we are Organifi, we always want to not only source the best efficacious ingredients, but also ingredients where the farmers are actually doing good for the community. That's cool. Now, one awesome. more thing. I do, I do want to add this because this was really cool to me. So it was, uh, and you brought this up. You said, we want to we want to make sure that we let people know that this is glyphosate residue free. Now, I was not aware, I wasn't fully aware that organic products could also have glyphosate residues in them because organic would mean you wouldn't use necessarily glyphosates. And yet that can definitely happen. So can you explain that? Like, how, what, well, first let's talk about glyphosates and then how is it that we can find glyphosate residues in organic products sometimes? Yeah, it's really upsetting because normally you think that you're safe from getting any of these herbicides in your products. But 
what I think, well, there is con- cross contamination from neighboring farms and then also from rainwater because glyphosate is water soluble. So it comes down in rain. But also, what some farmers are doing now is they're using it as a desiccating agent. So, post production, and they want their crops to dry faster. They do this a lot with like peas and oats and different grains, but it happens with all ingredients and they're spraying it with glyphosate. So, it dries it faster. And that's how certified organic products especially when ingredients are coming from certain countries like China, um, will be contaminated with glyphosate. And that's why I am, we at Organifi and myself as well, we're all so passionate about this glyphosate residue free certification. Um, Also, something that we were talking about earlier is that glyphosate is used as an herbicide, but it also was never patented as an herbicide. It was patented as an antibiotic. This is crazy. I, now, I know it had know antimicrobial that. effects. I did not know it was patented as an antibiotic. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, when we're consuming food that is contaminated with glyphosate, we are killing our microbiome, which is so essential for our hormone balance, our digestion, our overall energy, health, mental focus, and immunity. Yeah. So if it was patented as an antibody, how, how were we... How were we originally using this then? So what was created for what intent and how long did we use it like that? Can I speculate real quick? Because I know you know the answer to this, but I feel like this is almost like the Viagra story where they're like, we got a drug that lowers blood pressure and then they do the test and like, we're getting erections. That's what we're going to sell it for. Was it like that? Like, oh, it's an antibiotic. Oh, wow. It kills weeds really easily. Let's use that instead. Yeah. What they found is that it actually inhibits the shikimate pathway within the um, different like micro like microbes and plants. And they were like, oh, well, humans don't have the shikimate pathway, but they didn't realize how humans have more micro, like more cells that are not human than human cells, you know? So our microbiome is extremely valuable um, to our overall health. So basically this way they can spray this on. So, well, also it's usually sprayed on GMO crops. So within a genetically modified crop, they might be genetically modified to be glyphosate resistant. So Roundup resistant because mm-hmm. Roundup is the same. That's the product. brand name. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a brand name. So then you can grow this plant with all these weeds around it and you can spray the heck out of the plant and the weeds and only the weeds die, but not the plant. But it definitely causes a disease state within the soil and within the plants and the plant might live, but it is very weak and the plant no longer has a strong immune system. And then you just have to keep spraying more and more. So when you eat this residue, now the amounts are tiny with the residue, but you're basically eating super low doses of antibiotics all the time when you're you're consuming that. I I like talking about this too, because one of the things that I know that Sal talks a lot about is the glyphosates because people... People tend to give GMO products a, a, a bad name, and GMO in general isn't necessarily bad. It's more so the glyphosates that are that that's, are found on these plants that are that are worse. That's right? what we know. That's the part that we know that is terrible. That is bad. The, the plant itself, you know, there's arguments about the plant itself, but we know glyphosates are are disrupting the bacteria and the soil and in our bodies. So, and they're like, oh, but it's not doses that are high enough to, well, look, you you know, you eat every day, you get exposed to these residues every day. So would you take a small dose of antibiotics that isn't considered efficacious dose, but take it every single day? Of course not. Mm. So that's the big issue. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, not only to think about like the health of our bodies, but also to think of just the health of our soil and our environment in general, if we stopped spraying glyphosate today, it would take 50 years for it to get out of our, our environment mm. because it's water soluble. So you can't just sequester it with fat. It's just there. It gets it gets up in our clouds and our rainwater and, and it's easy to have contamination all over the place, even if you eat organic. But I don't want to be a doomsday day. You know? <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, we, we do what we can. And that's why it's really important that we support farmers that are not using glyphosate whether in the growing process or the spraying process. And, you know, we vote with our people vote with their dollars. So the more and more that the more and more important this is to people, you know, I see glyphosate phasing out and I feel good about this because people are finally starting to understand the importance. How many, how many uh, supplement companies actually have that certification? You know, it's a lot now. I, I think like a few years ago when we first started, it wasn't, there weren't very many. Mm-mm. I want to say around 2000, oh, wow. I might be wrong. I, I don't quote me, but the, the organization is called the detox project. 
And you can go on their website and you can look up all the brands that go above and beyond with this certification. Yeah. Now, can we, do we have tools to measure how much of this is in our soil and, and atmosphere right now? And are we going up or down? Like, do we do we have that ability? I know Dr. Bush talks about this stuff. Yeah. Dr. Bush kinda, talks a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I mean, we can test it. I think there are definitely home test kits. I tested my my spring water on the farm for glyphosate because that was my one non-negotiable. Mm. I was like, I am not going to buy this farm if I have glyphosate on my property. Mm. And there wasn't, thank goodness. Um, you can definitely get a test kit to test your own levels. I think it's only around $100. Mm -hmm. um, so you can definitely test water. I don't know. I'm sure there's a soil test, but I just don't know specifically of one. Yeah, and there was a study where they actually took a family and had them eat like organic and whatever. And they measured them before and after to see if they lower the, the amounts of things like pesticides and glyphosate. And they did. So just by changing your lifestyle, you can impact of course. how much of this you're exposed to. But I like this because it's another step. So yes, certified organic, also mm -hmm. glyphosate residue free, tested third party. So we know for sure, like this is legit. And we always have to, we have to test every quarter. So it's not like you can just get the certification once and then wow. kind of bait and switch the ingredients. Yeah. You know, you always have to test. So we, we always know. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I, I tell you, I like it. I love this product. I feel very like calm and focused on it and that, the good kind of energy, you know, not the jittery, you know, anxiety driven energy or irritable. I also don't get the irritable crash afterwards. It seems to be this real smooth kind of feel good uh, product. So well, I'm, I'm excited, excited about this because this is actually the first one that Sal's ever had the opportunity to truly formulate. Like we have co-signed for a few products for some of our partners in the past that we really like, but he wasn't part of the actual process of developing it. And I know this has been like a lifelong dream of his. So it's so cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a good uh, I'm so happy yeah, to be yeah, able yeah, to make yeah. this yeah. dream like, come Justin true. Can't, well, one day Justin will rock out on a stage in front of right. like tens we'll of thousands of people. Day. Like that's yeah. <laughs> Sal's was Sal like, I want to formulate my own, my yeah. supplement. Like he got to do this. So I'm really excited to see yeah. how the audience receives it and what everybody thinks about it. Yeah, so, it was fun yeah. to do. So yeah, thanks for coming on tonight. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for having me. Awesome. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press, and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps, and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets, at the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out, and less injury. That's another thing you'll see less injury as well.